For the past three weeks, we've been reading the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark in Scripture. And this is the first time in, in my years of ministry that I noticed something new in this, and that's the word demons. And it scattered all throughout this first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, and I couldn't get away from it. So I, I want to share with you some things that I learned about this, but you can see it for yourself. In the beginning, Mark begins this whole gospel saying, this is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So he's wanting to proclaim who Jesus is. And then the first thing that happens is Jesus is baptized, and then he's thrust out into the wilderness where he's tempted by demons, Satan, right? So all of a sudden out there, he's having these tempt this temptation to happen. So all of a sudden, we first have this encounter with Satan in the wilderness, this demon. And then he goes into the synagogue. And inside the synagogue is this person that has this unclean spirit, which is also a? Yes. And this, this, this demon recognizes Jesus as one with authority. And Jesus casts them out, permits them not to speak. And then they go on about their way. And now we come to today's lesson where he goes into Simon, uh, Simon's uh, house and his mother-in-law is there. And she has a fever. Now, uh, on, on a first just cursory reading, we can look at that and say she's just sick. You know, she needs some Tylenol. She'll get better in a couple of days kind of a thing. But back then, a fever, like especially according to the book of Deuteronomy, was considered to be something that has happened to you because you have broken some sort of covenantal law. And that there's something wrong inside of you or you have been possessed by something or you have a demon. And so Jesus lifts her and then she ends up serving them. And then right after that, the disciples go around and they start gathering people up and they're bringing them to Jesus. And he's curing the people that are sick and he's casting out demons. And then he goes off for him, by himself to go pray and they come searching diligently for him. Everybody wants to see you. And he says, then let's go to Galilee. And they go to Galilee and he brings the message to the synagogue. And again, it says he's casting out demons. I mean, it's all over the place. And I've, I'd never noticed this before. And I said, I got to figure this out. So I, I spent the past couple of weeks studying demons. Now, I'm not a professor in demonology, and I don't even know if that's a word. But I will tell you what I discovered in the Old Testament. This all begins from the beginning of creation. In the, in, the, in, the, in the garden story, we have our first parents that are wandering around and everything is great, but then something comes slithering up to them, right? What is that thing? Do you remember? A serpent, a snake, right? So there's a serpent that comes up and tempts them. Well, apparently there's these mischievous creatures in the story of creation that want to rebel against God's good creation. They don't want what God has created to be good to happen, and so they're rebelling against this. And humanity ends up saying, that sounds like a good idea, and we join in this mischievous behavior. And what happens to our first parents? They're plucked out of the garden. They're evicted. They're taken out of paradise. They're taken out of this right relationship with God because of this demon figure that's there. Ezekiel calls demons a, a spiritual force that refuses to abide under God's authority. So they're absolutely contrary to God's authority, God's way, and God's will. They're like, nope, that's not for me. So the demon are those spiritual forces that are against God's authority. Moses is actually the first person where actually uses the word demon in Scripture. And he talks about it as a spiritual wrestling match within you that's attacking the human construct and, and making everything that we do be focused on greed and selfishness and not on what God's after. In other words, it's contrary to God's way and God's will. It's against God's authority, and it's inviting darkness and death instead of life and light. And Satan is also mentioned in Scripture as well. And I discovered that when it's mentioned in Scripture, it's usually in the Hebrew, it means the Satan. So not necessarily like a singular figure, but like when Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, it's this attitude, this way of being that is a slanderer. It's an adversary. It's up against something. It is anti-everything. So scripture's telling us something about the nature of demons. And demons are those things that are against God's authority, that refuse to participate in God's good creation or are against God's good creation, and they're inviting this darkness and death into it. So that's this concept of a demon. Now, when Mark's writing this gospel, he introduces a whole lot of things that Jesus is wrestling with 
right in this first chapter, and I think he does so for good reason, because he says Jesus is the Son of God. He's trying to let the people know that Jesus is the Messiah that they have been waiting for, and the Messiah is supposed to come and correct the whole order of things, bring things back to a place of peace, destroy darkness, destroy death, destroy sin. This Messiah is supposed to come, on, come in to do this. And so the first enemies that Jesus has are not human beings, they're not Pharisees or scribes or even the Romans, but are these demons. And so he meets, at the very beginning, he is baptized, he goes out into the wilderness, and there is this figure that is tempting Jesus, that is going against the authority of God. And of course, Jesus does not succumb to this, but ends up quoting scripture and going about, and, 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 and he is able to, to move beyond this adversary. And then he goes into the synagogue, and there's this person with this unclean spirit, this demon. Now, honestly, I think it's great that in scripture it tells us that there's a demon inside of a synagogue. Heaven forbid if there's any demons in this church right now. <laughs> and this demon recognizes the authority of the Messiah. And immediately says, what do you have to do with us, Jesus? And he makes this thing be quiet. He removes them and he says he can't speak anymore. And the people are saying, who is this guy that does this with such great authority? So here is Jesus rebuking and casting out these demons or not allowing them to determine his actions because he's under God's authority and God's good creation. And because of this, then he goes into uh, uh, Simon's home, Simon and Andrew's home, and Simon's mother-in-law has this fever. And this is so cool. This is so cool. So Jesus goes in and he reaches down and he takes this woman by the hand and she has this fever, which we know is possibly like this concept of a demon, and he lifts her up. Now, Mark is smart here because he's using the same phrase, the same terminology, the same root word for resurrection. He's lifting her out of this darkness and this death. And then she is meant to serve. That's what it says. She, immediately right after that, she goes to serve them. That's where we get our word for deacon, and, and these are ministers of service, but also in the Greek, it also means through the dirt, through the earth, or through the atom. Mark's having a good time here. Because he's saying Jesus is resurrecting her from this old way of being to a new way of being. That's meant to serve others out of this darkness into light. Out of this death into new life. And this is so attractive that the disciples go running through the town and they're just like knocking on doors. You got any demons? You got any sick people? Come on out. I got this guy. You got to meet him. And they start bringing everybody to see Jesus. And you have, this, you have all these sick people and all these people with demons and he's curing them and he's casting out demons left and right. And then the next day, Jesus is off by himself to go pray. And the disciples are frantically looking for him. When they finally find him, like, you're not going to believe, man. Everybody's talking about you. What, what, what are we, we going to do? And he says, well, let's go. And they start headed toward Galilee. And they go into the synagogues, bringing the same message and doing the same exact thing, casting out demons. It's a very powerful message for us today. That there's this Messiah that can bring light out of darkness, life out of death, and cast out these demons. Now, if you're like me, you wrestle with stuff. There are things inside of you that are in direct opposition to God's authority, <laughs> to what God is asking of you to do, to be, and to say. I know they are with me. And I don't like to always turn toward God. I want to kind of hide those things. You know that there's things inside of us that, that, that don't honor God's good creation. And that means other people, other places, other concepts. And we have all kinds of great thoughts about what we think should happen to that person or happen to that thing. And we have these ways of thinking about stuff that go against what God created to be good. And to me, those are those demons. But lucky for us, we have a Messiah that can lift us out of this darkness, out of this death, into new life and into that light to live. And the action that's required is service. It's a beautiful thing. My spiritual director tells me all the time, there's not a single problem that we have in life that serving others won't solve. Now, the single thing that I have going on in my life that is a problem that if I serve others, it won't solve. And I'm pretty sure he read First Mark <laughs> because of this. Our mission statement is seek God, serve others. We have an opportunity here today, just for today, 
to turn whatever it is that we're hiding and holding on to, whatever demon it might be. And they come in many shapes and sizes to big, huge addictions, to, to small little things, to things that we mask that we don't have other people to see. How many of y'all have ever said, I'm fine, right? We have all kinds of ways that we mask things that we don't want others to see, that we refuse, that we're going to share with somebody, that we're going to take to the grave with us because we think we're broken, we're not salvageable, we're not savable. But the truth of the matter is, is that we have a Messiah, a Savior that can lift us no matter where we are at and bring us into new life and into the light. It's a pretty powerful message. So just for today, let's hand whatever it is that we've got over to God who can take them and do something with us and go out into the world and serve others. Amen.